Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Morning Markets from the team at True Potential. Today, we'll focus in on some of the overnight news flow and the potential impact that that has on asset markets. So yesterday, we discussed the fiscal support package in the US, the 900 billion, and some of the measures that were within that in terms of extending the unemployment support packages, additional support for SMEs, small and medium-sized enterprises, and also um, what that was doing in terms of individual payments to, to US citizens. Now, I had thought, and I suppose most market participants had thought, given that it had been through the legislative channels in, in the US and was requiring presidential signature, that that would be a rather straightforward process. But I suppose, as other things have shown us in, in 2020, we shouldn't take anything for granted. And overnight, um, in President Trump's favoured form of, of communication, that being Twitter, we got a video that suggests that he's not not that happy with the package and would have liked to have seen more being done to support uh, US population, small and medium sized enterprises, etc. So that has put a bit of a spanner into the work, shall we say, in getting that um, legislation agreed. It does look now that that will have to go back to, to the various uh, legislators in the US for them to come up with some additional measures which will allow then President Trump to, to sign this agreement through. The other side of that, we might not get agreement on, on the, the principles, and it's an interesting point when we look at what President Trump is calling for. So he's looking for a $2,000 payment instead of $600, and that additional support for SMEs. That probably actually aligns in more with what the Democrats were trying to push through in terms of a bigger stimulus package, and puts him at odds with a number of, of representatives from the Republican Party. So the political angle continues to, to play out. The impact on asset markets overnight was that we did see US S&P 500 futures trading off about 70 basis points or 0.7%. They subsequently come back, but it, it's going to be a, an interesting uh, few days to see how this, this plays out. Ultimately, it may be agreed um, before some of the unemployment packages roll off at the end of the month. It might not, and then it will fall to uh, President-elect Biden to move this forward um, in the coming months. So we'll, we'll have to just wait and see how this evolves. Looking back to, to asset markets yesterday, we saw a bit of a recovery in, in equity markets over the course of the day following the falls that we saw on Monday. No real specific catalyst for that other than just the, the reality of, of where we are and going back to some of the points we've discussed throughout the year, the challenges that the market faces in dealing with, with COVID-19 and the restrictions that are associated with that, but then also looking to the future where we, we know that we have a number of very successful vaccine candidates that are being rolled out and that will help um, with that recovery probably more into the, the second half of next year. But it's that push and pull, short-term challenges versus the medium-term opportunity that, that the vaccines are really creating. The other asset classes, just to, to touch on this morning, we did see um, sovereign bond markets. We did see yields come in a little bit there yesterday, so that's a positive uh, return from, from bond markets. Also, FX markets, foreign currency markets, we continue to see a degree of volatility there. And that's coming through from dollar strength um, over the past couple of days, a trend that's reversing what we have seen in place for, for a number of months, really, just as there's th this level of increased uncertainty. The other, I suppose, volatile aspect of, of currency markets is just what's happening with sterling, um, trading on the news flow around Brexit discussions, and that's impacting various currency pairs with, with sterling and as a result bringing, bringing volatility into to the, the foreign exchange markets at this point in time. Economic calendar itself has been, been pretty light over the past uh, couple of days and indeed will become even lighter as we go into to the Christmas period. I just wanted to touch on two indicators from the US yesterday. Uh, first just consumer confidence, uh, the conference board number there 
which did show a, a deterioration in, in consumer confidence uh, from last month, so to 88 from, from 92, 93 last month. I suppose it's not that surprising, just given the backdrop that we're, we're going going through. But again, interesting to note that expectations were for an improvement. The other, the other data point in the US was just in the housing market, where we did see a little bit of a, a slowdown uh, with sales falling maybe 2, 2 and a bit percent. Um, month on month but I think that's more a combination of where prices have got to and and the falling supply into the housing market in the US which we've, we've touched on previously. That's it um, for today and indeed it's, it's the last uh, morning markets comment for the year so please do join us again um, in, in 2021. We'll be back on the 4th of January. In between times we'll, we'll, we'll put out a review of, of the year but please join us again and please have an enjoyable Christmas period. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to the True Potential YouTube channel. If you have any questions or requests for future videos, let us know in the comments.